Hello everyone, this is Bradley. What you are watching right now is a semi-procedural animation that I have finished at the end of this tutorial. I've seen a similar animation to this about the cube on Facebook. After searching, I also found a reference of text animation uh, using Cinema 4D. So eventually, I combined the two animation principles together and I'm going to make a tutorial for this animation. This tutorial requires animation nodes. Uh, you can download it and know more about it from the description. Um, I also recommend you to watch the other tutorial about animation nodes either on my channel or other people's channels if you want to do motion graphics or whatever things procedural later on. So let's go. So the first thing that we're going to do is to add a text. In paragraph we make it a center, goes to edit modes and change the text like a Bradley for advertising purposes, rotate 90 degrees and shift the D. Making duplicate is always a very good hobby. And I'll also change the name. One is horizontal text. The other is vertical text. And hide both of them. And then we're going to add a cube for boolean cut. I'm going to go to the wireframe mode. For this cube, I'm going to add a array modifier. And I'm going to duplicate that. One name that as cut for horizontal, the other name as a cut for vertical, and uh, for cut for horizontal, I think I'm going to decrease the size on the axis to make it 0 0.01, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 1, something like that, and to increase the offset and increase the count. So this will be our knife, essentially. And for cutting for vertical, I'm going to do the exactly the same thing. Um, almost not exactly the same. Because I'm going to scale down the x-axis. 0, 0, 1. Increase the count. Increase the relative offset. So next thing we're going to do is to actually cut all these objects. Uh, I realized I actually forgot to convert them to mesh. <coughs> so I'm going to do for the other one as well. Convert that to mesh. And then I'm going to add a boolean modifier. And the choose for cut for verticals. So instead of anything, I got a cut. Yes, that should be good enough. Sometimes you have some problems in the cuts, like it generates kind of extra edges or something like that. Um, in that case, just uh, add a uh, solidify and put it before to the boolean. Usually, it will solve the problems. Or it actually sometimes creates a problem as well. But uh, you can just offset verticals and do things as you want. This is this after this part, it's still kind of procedural. <coughs> so let's. Uh, before you, uh, one thing I'll have to mention is before you apply to that, just uh, remember to duplicate one, and then apply to solidify, apply to the booleans. So now you have all the objects being separated, and then I'm going to hit the piece, separate the loose parts, and I'm go out of edit modes, uh, set M's, vertical pieces. That should be enough. So let's, yeah, every piece looks kind of fine. So it goes to the horizontal, do basically the same thing. So the last thing I want to do before we go to the animation node is I want to select all the objects and set the origin to geometry. And then I'm going to animation node and set this from current and transform. So I stored a, their current locations into the animation node. And this is very important for our future. As we go to the animation node, uh, I also want to kindly remind you to turn this always off. Uh, otherwise, it will basically burn your computer. Then I'm going to call two nodes, uh, collection info and object matrix output. Also, an additional node, which is called initial transform, is actually also called object ID key. So the principle that I'm going to do, uh, 
is I'm going to use animation node to control their locations. Matrix is similar to the concept of transform, although in fact it's a little bit different. And now if I'm putting these all objects uh, into this object socket, you can see our horizontal pieces has actually goes to world origin. And that's why initially we need to define their initial transform using these AM panels. So that if we use all objects to connect to that and set the metrics back, they recover their initial locations. Uh, I think I'm going to do these things with vertical pieces first. Because vertical pieces is something yeah, straightforward. And then I'm going to animate that. Uh, I have a controller. I also have triggers setting for this entire collection so that when I'm moving these controllers, it's updating the trees. Uh, I'm going to name one as um, control for horizontal and the other empty as control for vertical. Just uh, it does not matter what's the name. So we're working with vertical. So let's take this vertical control. And then I'm going to call up a node which is called a vertical uh, offset matrices. I'm going to turn on all these kind of things and use a object controller for set the type of direction. Because we're moving horizontally, so I'm going to set x to uh, set the direction to x. So now we connect the four, but it does not change a thing. But if we uh, change all, uh, any of these values. Uh, ideally speaking, oh yeah, I also need to switch this controller. And now if I'm changing these values, uh, 10, 5, then it's actually changing the values, which is very nice. And then I'm going to take this, um, like, uh, take x, yeah, rotating x, like 360 degrees, 360 degrees, that should be basically enough. And uh, so now I can basically animate that. So this is how it looks. So basically by just the keyframe this control, you get an animation. But now they looks kind of very flat. Uh, I want them to kind of bouncing or having kind of inertia at the end. So I'm going to interpolate for. So the output of all, although you cannot see anything through viewers, but the idea is uh, it goes from zero to one. So when the object is in the range of four, then it's uh, 100% which means 1. Uh, when it's outside then it's 0. So this is how it has been defined. And if you interpolate it, it means you are changing the sensitivity to its fall. And you can choose any type or even use curve interpolate to uh, make one by your own. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, in this case I'm going to use back, but sometimes you don't actually understand what back is. So a good way I usually do is uh, interpolation input. Basically, you do the exactly same thing. So why do I actually need this node? If you select this node and hit W, goes to viewer, then you can see how it actually looks. So this is what exactly you are actually working with. I'm going to invert that. So make it negative x. So now it appears. Whew. Uh, maybe this interpolation is too huge. That's why I sometimes recommend you to just uh, create one by own. But it, it, it does not really matter. This is just uh, a tutorial. So I, I don't intend to make it perfect. So that's it. And uh, looks kind of cool. So I'm going to keyframe this. So let's um, shift D, duplicate everything. This time I'm going to change that to horizontal pieces and control for horizontal. So 
So take down the vertical pieces. And I'm going to set the type to either Y or negative Y, I think. Or actually, Z. So this is how essentially it looks. Maybe I don't want this to interpolate, or I don't know. Let's just see how it actually looks. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> you can work as you wish. And uh, 480. Yeah, something like that. You can do whatever you want. Uh, times negative one. Times negative one. Or er, just uh, keep it as it is. I mean, honestly, you can keep, you can tweak all these things by your own. So I think my job is basically done. So before we I go to the final polishing part, there are several things I want to mention. Uh, one thing, if you scale down these empties, then it change the size of all, so that it can influence less objects or more objects as you scale size and down. Um, other things which is able to do. Sometimes uh, you may not like this bouncing effect for all the uh, all these parameters. So in that case, you just uh, duplicate one offset matrices and put a fourth which has not interpolated to that, and put the matrices back in and the matrices back. Something like that. But in that case, so you can do a lot of things with these kind of settings. Uh, then I'm going to keyframe these animations to make it complete. So here I'm going to like I'm going to keyframe here. So keyframe the locations goes to 140s and goes back to the locations. Okay, so the animation part seems like being the here's a an issue that occurs is the entire point of this animation is I want brightly to appear and brightly to disappear as the time goes. But now obviously I have two collections. So how I actually manage them together. So I have this range, as you can see, there's an interval from 60 to 70 frames. And this is a place where I can apply the control to the switch. So one has been hidden to the render and the other has been shown up in the render. And unfortunately, we cannot keyframe the collection. So if I'm hitting eyes, there's nothing occurs. It just says hide the render property cannot be animated. Something, something like that. And it's definitely possible to animate all these pieces uh, properties, but it will be too awkward. So in that case, I will use the opportunity to use the animation node to do the work. So I'm going to use a node which is called a visibility output. For both collection, and I'm going to activate hiding viewport and hiding render. So if you turn on this uh, hiding viewport, and you just uh, select that is the vertical pieces nodes, and take the hiding viewport that has been hidden, and of course it works with render as well. So you get a kind of idea about how it works. And I'm going to, there. you cannot directly keyframe these animation nodes. So even if you hit an eye, that's just another work. It does not show in the timeline. And it's just basically not working. And after considering many, many different methods, I think the best method in this case is just to animate float. And you need a time info. So basically it tells the frame number and let's you hit to one and I'm going to use a compare 
So when it when the result equals to one, then it will light up. And the duration is also the frame number. So I'm going to pick it. So it takes 65 frames to hit OK. I'm going to select these two. So now I'm right at 55, then both of them has been hidden. In that case, that's it. I'm going to also use a invert boolean so that when it's on, this one is the horizontal pieces is off. So now we can view this animation. So now you can see this brightly. This is our how our animation has been gone. I think this is good. I think it, it's a it's not a very huge tree, isn't it? And it's kind of repetitive tree. <laughs> so that's it. So just a wrap up at the end about how this animation finally looks. And uh, it disappears. Something like that. And so on and so forth. You can do all the color things better than I do, I suppose. Uh, but the several things I would like to mention is just uh, hit this thing called settings. Is uh, as I probably have seen it said earlier, that you can put a offset matrices behind the offset matrices. This time I'm not putting any false. Uh, but instead, I'm uh, only putting a controller. Uh, the reason to have this controller uh, so that I can actually change the text position and I can also even scale its thickness. And uh, that's it. And in terms of colorings, basically, you just uh, put a material on a single object and select all the objects and control L to link the materials and so on so forth. I think that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.